All right, so now uh, time to implement delete. We'll save put for a little bit later. We're going to go ahead and do delete next. So let's go ahead and add some code in our person controller. So there's some things to um, there's some things to consider when you're when you're dealing with delete. Uh, first of all, you're removing a resource, and when you remove a resource, we need to know the client usually wants to know what to do next. Um, in this case, we're removing a record from the database, which is expected, so the client would probably deal with that. But in general, REST would dictate that we try to help the client out as much as possible. Otherwise, we're mandating that the client has to implement state on their side, which is not RESTful. So let's go over to the person persistence class, and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to implement the delete person. So again, this is just a little helper class and helper function that we're going to implement. So I uh, just copied the get person code because we're going to use some of that. And instead of getting a person, we're going to delete the person. And we are going to return a Boolean in this case. And the Boolean will be uh, true if we were able to delete the record or false if not. We want to return an HTTP status code of 404 if the resource that they that the client asked to delete is not found. And we are going to return a 204 if it is found. We're not going to return any content back. Now this is where the discussion gets in on what you should do on status codes for delete. Some people would say, well, you should return a 200 and provide a URI or URL to the, a resource that would indicate what to do next. Uh, the other status code you could return is a 202, which means you accepted the request to delete, but that you haven't actually deleted the resource yet. So this could be useful if you were doing some kind of a lazy delete or something like that, where you, you just queued the delete up for, for processing later. But we're going to do a 204 and a 404. So 204 which says it was deleted, but there's no content. In other words, we're not going to give you back anything. And uh, 404 if it doesn't exist. So to do that, we're going to need to fix our query here. And it needs to say delete from table personnel. And we don't need this person object. And we do. Uh, uh, let's see, hold on. Hang on, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Start over again. Let's let's go ahead and uh, what we're going to do first is check to see if the record exists. Okay, so if the record doesn't exist, we're going to return false. So all this is going to do is determine does the record exist or not. Okay. Now you could argue, well, this is two steps. Why don't you just do it all in one? Um, you certainly could. One thing to consider, though, is if you get into a lot of complicated logic, you might want to, you know, add a stored procedure or something like that to deal with this. All right. So in any case, this will go and do a query and find out. It we know that if SQL reader read is successful, that we have the record. And so then what we can do is do our delete, which I was starting to do. So I'm going to copy this code down. Now I'm going to just reuse the same SQL string variable here. And I'm going to change this to say delete instead of select. And it doesn't use the star syntax there. And then uh, the command we will reassign. Now before we do this, we need to close the reader. Because the reader is open at this point, and that's going to throw things off for the command. So what we are going to do right now is do SQL MySQL reader dot close. That forces the reader to close because we're done with it. Then we can go ahead and execute a new command and in this case we're just we don't need to get anything back and we're not going to execute reader, we're going to execute no query. So we're not actually doing a query back. Um, sorry, non-query, not no query. Okay. And then in this case, we're going to go ahead and return true. Now you could put an exception handler in here in case for some reason your syntax or your SQL was wrong. Um, 
the way things are set right now, it's just going to bubble that ex an exception out because we don't have an exception handler. It will return a 500 level error back to the server, which is probably okay, but um, there's lots of different ways you can think about designing this. Okay, so there's our delete person. Now we can go ahead and, add, and create our uh, controller code. So we already have this skeleton right here. And what we want to do is return a response message. So we're not going to return void. And we need this to be a long because we're dealing with longs for our IDs. Okay, and so uh, we'll get us a person persistence object. So let's grab one of those. And we need a little Boolean to determine if the record existed or not. So we'll just set that equal to false to start with. And then we will call our method, passing in the ID that was passed in to us. That'll delete the record and set the record existed variable. And then it's pretty simple. We just say if record existed, we're going to do one thing. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. So what is the something else we're going to do and what is the thing we're going to do? Well, we're going to set a response code just like we did right here. So, but I just need this variable and then it's going to be conditional as to which response code we send back. So the first thing I'm going to do at this point in the code is just get a, get a um, HTTP response message object. And then we are going to create a response. So if you were to return a 200, this is how the request URI up there, you can see you might be able to um, use that to give a location of something that might be useful for the client. So the response in this case is going to be, we don't want created. We want to return a 204, which is no content. Okay, So it says we deleted it, but we're not giving anything back. Let's many equal signs there. And the other case is a 404, which is a not found, right? This HTTP status code is really nice. You don't have to sit here and actually worry about the constants or the numbers. You just pick the thing that it is. All right, let's run that and watch that work. Oops, the thing that we forgot to do was return the response, right? You probably caught that. That's why the delete was under, underlined in red. All right, so here we go. We're building now. And then we will go ahead and launch. DHC. So let's start by doing a get on everything. We implemented that last time. Okay, so we have, you'll notice the ID one's already gone. I've been done some testing and deleted that. But we have ID two here. So if we put slash two, person slash two, and change this to a delete, if we coded everything right, that should come back with a 204, which it does. Now watch what happens if I send that request again. This time it'll return back a 404 not found because it can't find it. So again, you get to decide how exactly you want to implement that, but that's how it works. So that worked out pretty well for us. So the last thing we need to do is implement a put, and uh, that'll be next.